Uh, well, joined now by Shadow Chief Secretary to the Treasury, uh, Pat McFadden. Hi, it's good to see you. Good morning. Has the government done the right thing? Well, it's of course good to get our diplomatic uh, representatives uh, and staff out, but of course there are still uh, possibly several thousand uh, UK citizens uh, left in Sudan, uh, and they're asking, what about us? Uh, so I expect there'll be a statement to uh, the House of Commons later this afternoon. Are you I asking think. for one? Uh, well, we will ask for one, but I think the government will probably give one. Um, and I think the key question uh, in that statement will be, what about those who are still left there? What is the plan for them? How is support uh, to be got to them? I understand the practical difficulties uh, on the ground. Uh, and of course, you need the right uh, military advice about this. But the question will be, what about those who are still there? What would you do differently, do you think, as a government? Well, I think we'd be looking to those who are still there. First of all, you've got to try and find out who they all are and, uh, where, they are. A, and where they are in the country. And then I'd be asking uh, the defence chiefs, uh, what can we do here? What are the practicalities? But you need your diplomats in play to do that. Well, you can have your diplomats uh, giving support from outside the country. And I think the situation probably was that the diplomats weren't able to operate uh, from within the country. So I don't think you need them in country, but I think you need the proper advice on this. Um, but the question should be, what can we do to help those who are still there? Um, what on earth was Diane Abbott thinking about? Well, I can't put myself in her mind. Uh, I can only express a view on what she wrote, uh, which was, uh, was wrong uh, and it's indisputable uh, that, for example, uh, when she wrote the, the letter to the newspaper yesterday, it's indisputable. Uh, that Jewish people, for example, have suffered terrible uh, racism, both in history and it's still going on uh, today. So the chief whip and the party leader had no choice but to take the action that they took yesterday. Do you think she believed what she was writing? Look, you can't put yourself in someone's mind, but I think when it comes to the awful history of racism, uh, one thing we shouldn't do is try to establish a hierarchy or suggest that one group of people's experience somehow counts more than others. Of course, uh, but I mean, the experiences the may be different. But, the, point, yeah. the point is, what the party's been through. What on earth was she thinking? Well, look, I can't say what she was thinking, but I can say we've got to turn the page on that kind of thinking. Uh, when Keir Starmer became party leader three years ago, he was determined to turn the page uh, on the culture that had. Uh, come into the Labour Party under the previous uh, leadership uh, and we had a terrible, terrible problem with anti-Semitism, as you and your viewers will be aware. He's deeply genuine about making that change. Uh, he's made the right response to the Equality and Human Rights Commission report that came out a few weeks ago and said the Labour Party had made huge progress. Okay. Uh, and we've got to make sure that we underline that progress and that's why yesterday's suspension had to happen. Do you accept your apology? Well... I'm sure if she's made an apology, it's genuine, uh, but it will be for the chief whip and the leader to decide what happens next. What do you, given what she said, what would you support? What I support is not having any kind of hierarchy when it comes to uh, discussing racism and trying to, you know, what should we be striving for? That with all the terrible history uh, that has affected people of different races and creeds, in this day and age, can we not treat everybody with equal human dignity, with no distinctions based on race or creed. Now, that's a work in progress. I'm not saying we're there, but that's what we should be striving for and that's what the Labour Party should okay. stand for. Lord Mann was on the programme this morning. He says that she should step down at the next election. Well, the, the way that this works in the Labour Party is you are picked by your local party, you have to be approved by the NEC. The Chief Whip has a big say in that too, so there'll be a process there. It's not for me to decide who gets to be a candidate, but, but, it, but it is for me uh, to say what I think the Labour Party should stand for, and that's what I said in response to your question a moment or two ago. Uh, you know, when Keir became leader... Should as she I step say, down at the next election? Well, look, uh, she and the uh, Chief Whip and the leader will have to discuss that... What's your and opinion? ..and decide that. Uh, my opinion is we need to have firmly turn the, pa the page on the Why culture... Because I don't decide who gets to be. No, but you're entitled to your opinion. I know, 
But I mean, Lord Mann was, you know, was very happy to tell us what his opinion was. You must have one. Look, my view is that the views in her letter were deeply wrong. They were historically wrong. They are offensive to people. Uh, and that uh, the Labour Party has to stand for uh, treating everybody with human dignity, regardless of race or creed. Uh, it's a lesson we should have learned a long time ago, and it's certainly one that we should learn today. Talk to me about what it was like working with Gordon Brown. Was he a bully? I never witnessed anything like that. He's a tough guy, Gordon. Uh, Did he, he could be just shout and throw very things? Bust. He's never shouted in my, uh, you know, in a, in a room I was in. I've never seen him do do that. Uh, you I haven't mean, seen him throwing anything? No. Apparently he threw phones and <laughs> apparently a photocopier. A, a photocopier? <laughs> apparently so. <laughs> well, uh, I never witnessed anything like that. Uh, look, Gordon uh, was a robust character, uh, certainly, but I never witnessed anything that you've just cited. OK, and are you content that what's happened with Dominic Raab, that he was a, a bully? Well, that's what the inquiry found on a couple of counts. And the thing that disturbed me about Dominic Raab's response to this was this a statement he made about activist civil servants. Mm -hmm. And the reason that disturbs me is because uh, having a civil service that serves any government, whether it's Labour or Conservative, and does so to the best of its ability is really important. And if we get, and he's not the first one to suggest this, if we get this notion among Conservative ministers that they're going to start blaming civil service uh, blocking or being obstructive uh, for their own mistakes, I think that's deeply unhealthy for our uh, democracy. You remember Mrs Thatcher said, advisers advise and ministers decide. She was right about that. But with that power of decision also comes the obligation of responsibility. And he has to take responsibility for his actions and not try to blame the civil service. Just before I let you go, are you going to say that uh, Diane Abbott shouldn't stand at the next election or not? Uh, that's a matter for the Chief Whip and the party leader. OK, it's good to see you. Thanks very much indeed.